Whenever there's a new range of phones that comes out, there's always a question of whether you should go for the entry level version or spend the extra and go with whatever the top tier version is. Whether it's called the Pro, the Plus, the Ultra, the Max or some ridiculous combination of all four. In Google's barn you'll find two models, the standard Pixel 8 and the larger, more expensive Pixel 8 Pro. Now there are some extra features on the Pro, but the Pixel 8 has lots of the same features and performance, so should you spend more or should you save some money? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint and in this video I'll tell you. Now, unlike some phone ranges, there's not really much difference when it comes to build materials and design between the 8 and the 8 Pro. They both clearly belong to the same family and use very similar materials with similar shaping across the board. That's not to say they're identical, however, and some of the differences are ones that aren't easy to see. For instance, both use Gorilla Glass Victus, but the Pro has the newer, more durable Gorilla Glass Victus 2. Also, the Pro has a frosted matte glass finish on the back, where the regular uses a shiny, glossy glass, and that means the regular version will show fingerprint smears a lot more readily on that glass. It's completely the other way around with the aluminium edges though. The pros are shiny and show those fingerprints and any scratches really easily versus the matte dull aluminium around the small one. And that size is actually an important distinction. I found the 8 Pro is pretty hefty and so much so that when I'm sat down it very regularly slips out of my pocket. Because despite that matte gloss it's still quite a slippery foam. And the extra size and weight means it's a bit less comfortable to hold in one hand and use one handed as well. Apart from that, there's not much else to consider on the design and build side because both are water and dust resistant to the same IP68 level. That means they can handle everyday spills and accidents just fine. So on to the first big difference between the two phones that might just cause you to think about going with the Pro. The display. At 6.7 inches, it's larger than the 6.2 inch on the regular Pixel 8. But that's not all. It's better in almost every other measurable way too. It's a near enough Quad HD Plus resolution panel versus Full HD on the 8. Both are comfortably over 400 pixels per inch though, so are plenty sharp enough. There's just that extra sense of crispiness on the Pixel 8 Pro, like the fine details are a bit smoother, especially around the small text and fine lines. Will it matter when you're watching videos or gaming and everything's moving quickly on the screen? No, probably not. And despite the fact that the 8 Pro can reach higher peak brightnesses, the Pixel 8 is plenty bright enough too. It can reach 2000 nits peak, and both can also reach 120Hz refresh rates. However, the Pro does have a more advanced panel. It's capable of running as low as 1Hz to save battery. The 8 only goes as low as 60Hz. Will you care about that while binge watching your favourite YouTuber or watching your favourite Netflix show? Probably not. Now, there does seem to be a slight yellowish greenish tint to the Pixel 8 display compared to the 8 Pro, so the Pro does seem to have a bit more accuracy to it. It feels a tad cleaner and crisper in the colour department, but there's not a huge amount in this. I won't talk too much about performance and battery because two reasons. First, they're not all that different to each other in this department, and second, I wanted to spend more time with the cameras. Not unsurprisingly though, with both phones being powered by the Tensor G3, they're both equally powerful from a processing standpoint. They'll run games smoothly with little to no lag and the interface and menus scroll really smoothly on that 120Hz panel. And like I said, the 120Hz is more adaptive on the Pro. So you might notice some subtle differences with the changes in animation speed, but it's really hard to see that with the naked eye. With that said, the Pro has more RAM, so in games or camera processes that require a bit more available memory, you could just eke out a tiny bit extra performance on the Pro. Again, not something I noticed really easily with my own eyes. It's a similar story with battery life. They have different capacities, and on most days with my typical 2-3 to three hours of mixed usage, I didn't see much in the way of a difference between using the larger Pro over the 8. However, a good day trip down to London is usually an indicator of good battery life. Listening to music the entire six hours of travel, while browsing social media, the web, and all the while the phone switching between different phone masks, and then using Google Maps in London to make my way around the city is normally a really good way to kill battery. The Pixel 8 Pro wasn't really troubled at all and made its way back to my bedside that night with more than 40% left over. The Pixel 8 was closer to 20 or 30. So I said I wanted to spend a bit more time talking about cameras because this is where there are some very obvious and simple differences between the two systems, but at the same time, 
a lot of similarities. That's predominantly because the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro share the same image processing engines, and use the same AI-powered processing for colours, contrast and all the rest of it. They both also share the same primary camera hardware, so if you spend most of your time taking photos with that one times camera, the Pro won't serve you any better than the regular Pixel 8. Putting daytime shots side by side with each other, they both have that typical Pixel look of high contrast, high dynamic range, high saturation images, and they're about as strong as each other. Both have ultra-wide cameras too, although there is a difference in sensor size and pixel count here. And the biggest difference I found in actually using them was that when, in night mode particularly, the ultra-wide on the Pixel 8 really struggled to focus, or just refused, and so I'd end up with completely blurry images, which, by the by, I kinda like, but weren't what I was going for. The big selling point, and something I found myself using more than I thought I would, is that 5x optical camera on the Pro. It's fantastic. And I really can't overstate the difference between using that lens versus using the digital zoom on the regular Pixel 8. Google's smaller phone has a 2x button in the camera interface which crops into the main sensor. But if you want to zoom further, you can, but it's all digital. It'll go up to 8 times, but at that point the images get really quite poor in terms of detail, almost like someone smeared grease over the lens of the camera. To get to that same point of detail-less smear on the 8 Pro, you have to push all the way to 30 times. So when you hit that 5 times button, you get a much sharper, deeper and richer image than what the Pixel 8 can manage at 2 times. Now I did sometimes find that the Pixel 8 Pro zoom camera would get confused when focusing and just shuts down the camera app. It happened maybe 2 times a day when I went out to shoot, both day and nighttime shots. Otherwise there's very little actual difference in colours, image processing and detail across the board. Even taking them out at night time, where they both take 2-3 to three seconds to capture a night mode shot, and use AI to get rid of any blur from Handshake, you'd be hard pushed to pick which shots came from which phones, at least looking at the primary lens. In fact, night mode is one of the best reasons to pick any pixel. Although it's not the fastest I've used, the extra time it keeps the shutter open usually means more light is captured from the dark skies and the shadows than with a lot of other phones. Plus textures in stone and brickwork look realistic, they're not overly smoothed out. As for video, they're pretty much identical, and continue that colour and contrast rich approach to stills. Plus, it can stabilise the footage really effectively in the main camera, and does so while shooting at 4K resolution. A lot of other phones make you go down to 1080p for this kind of stabilisation. Now, where the Pixel 8 Pro has the edge for photography enthusiasts is there's an additional Pro manual photography mode that you can load up to adjust ISO, shutter speed and focus. The Pixel 8 doesn't have those options. Both are packed with Pixel AI features though, so you can go into the Photos app to edit photos after shooting, and do amazing things like removing objects from the background, moving your subject to a different area entirely, or even generating new skies and seas. So which is the best phone for you overall? Well, this is actually a tough call, because as an all-round experience, the Pixel 8 Pro is genuinely wonderful. And the added benefit of that zoom lens and the extra quality from the display are truly great. However, when I think about how much each phone costs, how much phone you get for the money at its current price, I think the regular Pixel 8 is one of the best value for money phones on the market. It gives you a lot of what makes the Pixel 8 Pro great, in a smaller package, and one that costs less. If my own money was on the line, I'd find it hard to justify spending the extra on the Pro, so I think the Pixel 8 is the most sensible choice. What do you think? Would you spend the extra and get the Pro, or is the Pixel 8 enough phone for you? Let me know in the comments, or grab me on threads, I'm at Cam Bunsen. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap that notification bell, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.